Welcome back. It's been a long time. EPGD Law, Eric Rodebois. We are doing another video blog post. It's been, who knows, a couple weeks, a couple months. I think it was right before the hurricane almost hit Miami. So anyways, EPGD Law, Eric Rodebois. I want to talk to you guys today about the foreign bank account reporting. Um, this was just a little diagram I was doing for one of my clients, so we're going to take this off. But most of you might be asking, what is foreign bank account reporting? Well, let me just be clear. If you don't have foreign bank accounts, and you don't know anyone with foreign bank accounts, then you can turn off this blog and you can look at something else on Facebook. If, however, you know somebody, um, there's a lot of foreigners here in Miami, a lot of people with ties to foreign countries, and the key is this. If you have any number of foreign accounts that add up, cumulative, to more than $10,000 at any point during the year, now mind you, there's exchange rates involved, um, they add up all the different accounts, so if you have like accounts in three different countries, they'll look at, it's complicated. But the point is this, if you have more than $10,000, you're supposed to report it to the IRS. Actually, you're reporting it to the Department of the Treasury, but they use the IRS to basically implement the plan. So, what's the trick? The trick is, if you don't do it, there is a hefty, hefty penalty. Now, if you do do it, there's nothing. There's no tax. It's pretty plain vanilla. And frankly, your accountant should know this. And if your accountant doesn't know this, you need a different accountant, especially if you're one of those people who has offshore accounts. So for all of the CPAs and accountants and tax preparers listening to this blog post, please ask your clients, do you have foreign accounts? Because it's really easy. Now, they're changing the rules from 2016 going into 2017. Um, traditionally, what it was was you had to report all the accounts by the middle of June. Okay, or I think it was June 30th. And next year they're gonna change it and they're just gonna, you're just gonna report it with your regular tax return. And like I said, it's just a report and you just tell them, in Mexico I have these three accounts, in Costa Rica I've got these two accounts, in France I've got these two accounts, and here's the amounts, the highest uh, balance that they had throughout the year. And then they add it up and they'll let you know. Now, as a quick aside, there's a couple other things that you need to report to the IRS and to the Department of the Treasury, including ownership of foreign companies. Um, it's even a minority ownership. Now, you don't need to report land, so if you own land in another country, but a lot of people own that land through a foreign company. Again, there's no tax, there's just a big penalty if you fail to do it. Um, there's also another report that you would do uh, in the springtime if, you, if your accounts have more than a certain amount of money. I said uh, 10000 If it's more than 50000 you have extra forms to fill out. So basically, get this through your head. If you have ties to foreign countries and you have ties to the United States, you need to talk to a professional about what your reporting obligations are. The taxes and penalties, uh, I'm sorry, I should have said penalties, are scary. They're truly draconian. Um, in fact, they make it so that uh, it's, it's, it's almost, this is something I've been telling a lot of people recently, our entire system, our income taxes, our estate taxes, even most of our laws are based on the honor system, right? Which means you do things the right way, we hope, and if you don't and you get caught, you're going to get punished. So I know a number of people who, a uh, great example is you inherit uh, an offshore bank account in Europe from one of your grandparents when they pass away and you're not sophisticated with regards to these foreign reporting obligations, so you don't think anything of it. And then one day you're reading on the internet and you see, hey, if you own more than $10,000 overseas, you're supposed to be reporting it. And you say to yourself, wait a minute, I haven't reported anything, and it's been five or six years since I inherited that account from my next of kin. So, um, you know, what am I supposed to do? So, we're gonna go back to the board, okay? And basically, you got a couple options. Now, the Beginning question, question number one, the overriding question is, were you willful? Now, what does that mean? Well, that's one of those words where the lawyers make all their money. Did you know about your obligations and avoid them on purpose? So, for example, if you had a meeting and your accountant said, hey, you're supposed to report this and you didn't, that's willful. Or, I'll use another example. I had the guy who, what did he do? He got divorced. He owed his ex-wife a whole ton of money, but he was like, I'm never paying her a dime. So what he did is he set up a BVI, that's British Virgin Islands Company, that's a common uh, jurisdiction to set up offshore companies because they don't have any taxes in the BVIs. So he set up a BVI company, which then owned a Swiss bank account. Classic, right, Switzerland? Then he moved to Buenos Aires. 
And so in Buenos Aires, he's living, having his happy life until the Buenos Aires economy tanks. So then he's like, you know what? I think I want to go back to the United States because I don't really want to be here in Argentina anymore. And right around the same time, the United States negotiated a treaty with Switzerland where all the Swiss banks were forced to turn over records of any bank accounts that were related to U.S. persons. Now, it wasn't just direct U.S. person-owned bank accounts. It was also the corporations, the offshore entities, whatever. And so there's paperwork, there's a paper trail that says that this BVI company was owned by this dude and that that company had a, an account in Switzerland. And so what they did is they sent him paperwork that said, hey, um, please confirm that you're up to date with your IRS filings. Um, period, the end. And so he said, um, I have no idea what you're talking about. Now, in his case, he intentionally set up this offshore structure to not pay his ex-wife. That would probably be willful. So, willful. We'll say yes. No. Here's no. My mother's um, husband passed away, and my dad, and my mom inherited a bank account. And my mom doesn't know anything about anything about this stuff. And so 10 or 15 years later, she says, was I supposed to be reporting that account to the IRS? And I said, yeah, mom, um, your son's a tax lawyer. Maybe we should have talked about this, but she's truly innocent. She's a no, um, that guy is a yes. Some people who intentionally are trying to hide their money and not pay taxes are yeses. Okay, so now this is the first step, okay? Now the next question are, did you get caught? Now, what does that mean? It basically comes down to this. The IRS has a number of amnesty programs because they know that there's millions and millions of people in this situation, uh, people who just moved to America and don't think about their bank accounts or their retirement accounts in Buenos Aires or Quebec, Montreal, whatever. So the question is, did you get caught? Getting caught is, did the IRS find you and say, hey, we found out that you have this account? So that's the next question. Did you get caught? Yes or no? Now the yes means you know, your options are limited. You know, you got caught, and then the IRS is gonna decide whether or not you were willful or not. They're gonna, and, and by the way, the penalty structure for willful or not willful is completely different. It's, it's, it's they aren't even similar. Um, if no, then you've got a couple choices, okay? So your choices typically are to do an amnesty program. Now, under here, under the amnesties, we've got two. We've got what they call streamlined, and we've got what they call OVDP. And actually this one changes names every couple years, but to put it in perspective, the OVDP is for the willful people, the streamlined is for the non-willful people. You get a really small penalty under streamlined, and there's a whole procedure and a way to do it and a, and a whole practice, and you know there's a whole package and all these disclosures, and we have to work out a narrative where we tell them a whole story about how you're so innocent and you didn't know any better. Um, OVDP is please don't send me to jail and that's right because there is actual civil and criminal penalties now I'm a Texan kind of feel like I'm a libertarian and I don't think the government has any business going around asking people about what their accounts are and what they're doing with their personal money and personal time unfortunately I don't get to make the laws so these are the laws Laws are, if you got foreign bank accounts and they add up to more than $10,000, you gotta report them. If you haven't been reporting them, you need to do an amnesty, you, you need to do it before you get caught. If you get caught, then you need to go hire a lawyer. If you haven't been caught, your lawyer's gonna help you decide whether you're gonna do OVDP for the willful or streamline for the non-willful. Um, either way, these are the best. Now, there is one more option I haven't mentioned, and that's what's called the quiet disclosure. Quiet disclosure means you fill out all the missing returns. They can go back six years as the statute of limitations. So you fill out all the missing F-bars, it's an actual form, and you send those in, um, and it's almost like slipping it under the door, and you walk away like whistling down the street, and you hope that nobody catches you. Um, there's one other option, which I am not even gonna put on the board, and that is pretend like you don't know anything, and just maybe start next year doing it the right way, Remember, it's a six-year statute of limitations. I call that the flamingo method because you're putting your head in the stand. It's not a flamingo, it's an ostrich, isn't it? So you put the ostrich head in the sand, uh, and, and, and you know, that's cool as long as uh, you have the antacids because you have six years of waiting for the IRS to come in on an audit. 
Um, long story short, if you got the offshore accounts, report them. If you haven't been reporting them, come talk to someone like me. We can fix the problem. The penalty structure for the amnesty is pretty reasonable, and it's better to be able to sleep at night and know that you've got all your affairs taken care of. So, good to see all of you again. It's been a while. EPGD, Business Law, Eric Rodebois, and we'll see you next week.